Ethernet IP Made Easy is a simple freeware utility designed to walk users through the configuration of Phoenix Contact I.O. and switches. In this video, we will go through a basic configuration of a lean managed switch in an inline modular Ethernet IP I.O. station. If you don't already have the utility, it can be downloaded at phoenixcontact.com slash EIP. Step 1. Select what Ethernet port your PC should utilize when searching and configuring the Ethernet IP devices. Once you highlight the desired port, select Next to continue. This step allows you to limit the utility's ability to spy the entire network by specifying address ranges. To enable this function, you simply locate the Enable Include Exclude of IP Address checkbox, check it, then add the IP address ranges into the Include or Exclude fields. If this feature is not needed, just move on to the next step. Now it's time to start configuring IP addresses. While on this page, the utility spies for Ethernet devices. Once a device is located, it will be displayed in the field. If the device already has an IP address, that information will be displayed in the field. To assign or change an IP address, just highlight a device and in the IP address window, enter the desired IP address. Once you hit the Add button, you will see the new address show up in the IP to Assign field. At this point, the device has not yet received its new IP address. This will occur in the next step. Once you have designated addresses for each of the devices, you can move on to the next step. With our new IP addresses designated, it's time to apply these changes to the devices by highlighting the device and clicking the Start Serving IP Address button. Once the process starts, you will see the word Assigning in the IP address field. When the device has accepted, the field will change and display the device's new IP address. If the device had an IP address, it may need to be power cycled before the new address takes effect. From this page, we can view and configure all the Phoenix Contact managed switches on your network. Just highlight the desired device and check the boxes to enable or disable the desired features. Once complete, click the Send and Save Configuration button to store the new configuration into the switched non-volatile memory. Once all of your switches are configured, you can move on to the I.O. configuration. From the Ethernet IP I.O. configuration page, we can start the configuration of individual inline modular I.O. stations. To proceed, you simply select the desired I.O. station and click Next. The first step in I.O. configuration is to answer the following three questions. Do you want the first input word on your station to contain station diagnostics data? Do you want to pad I.O. and guarantee that analog data will only start on even bytes for simplified programming? Do you want to disable the IP addressing mechanism so the current IP address is stored permanently? Once you have made these selections, the configuration needs to be written before moving to the next step. In this step, we're going to click the Add All I.O. button and the I.O. station will configure itself with the currently connected local bus modules. If you needed to change the configuration, you will need to click the Accept New Configuration button. The final step is to configure any analog modules you may have on the local bus. This page can be handled a couple different ways. First, we could select range, channel, and designate each channel for a specific voltage or current range. Second, we could select manual configuration for specialized configurations. The final option, add the configuration to the pole to allow this configuration to be handled in the PLC logic. Whichever method you choose, just make sure you click the Write Config button to store your settings before moving on. Your I.O. configuration is now complete, and all that's left to do is configure the RS Logix 5000 project. To help the programmer, we created this page to show basic configuration and I.O. mapping data. This information can either be viewed here or copied and pasted to a text document for future reference. If you already have an active RS Logix project, you can use this page to push the I.O. configuration directly into the project. To do this, you will first have to save the project as a .l5k file extension. Then, from this page, Utility can access the file and add the I.O. configuration to the project. On the final page, 
we gave you a utility that allows you to send explicit messages to the I.O. station for additional configuration, testing, and troubleshooting. Now, click Next again, and you will be taken back to the beginning of the I.O. configuration section. If you only have one station to configure, simply click the Exit button to close the utility.